Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hi, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Sorry it's been a little while, but uh, I'm trying to get back in the swing. And the question I'm going to answer this week came in actually last year. This one's been floating around for a while, but I figured let's get into it. This is about adjusting pitch and speed. The question came in from Ray. Ray says, uh, despite my best efforts so far, I'm unable to figure out how to use the pitch and speed adjustment in Twisted Wave. Sometimes I just want to raise or lower my natural voice pitch just a bit for an animation, and often I'd like to adjust a long read by only a second to make it fit the timing. I think I should be able to do these tasks on Twisted Wave, but they've got me stymied. Any help? Twisted Wave does have the ability to adjust time and pitch. So let me show you what those two things mean and how they're different from each other. So I've opened up an audio file here that was recorded by a voice actor named Tony Banks a few years ago. I'm looking at the length of the file and it's, uh, if I select the whole thing, it tells me that it's 30 seconds, 0.85. So it's a little bit longer than 30 seconds. So the first thing you might want to do, let's say you finish this edit and it's, it's pretty much close to locked. You now want to make this fit in a 30 second time slot. Well, how would you do that? There's a few ways to go about it. My first and favorite way is wherever there's possible to remove some space, dry space or dead space um, to tighten up the performance. That's always the first place I will look to shorten time. So let's just assume that you've already done that and you've already sucked up all the dead space in this file. And yet, even after you've done all that, you still just need to squeeze a little more time out of it. So if that's the case, then uh, the time and pitch controls are going to be useful for you. So if you go into effects, open up the change pitch and speed menu, you'll see there's a few controls here. You've got control over pitch, which is frequency or how high or how low your voice will sound. And you've got control over speed, which is how fast the playback is going to be. In the days of reel-to-reel -reel tape or something like that, those two settings were connected together. You couldn't change pitch or speed independently. So when you adjusted the pitch or the speed, you were going to adjust both at the same time. So, for example... Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. Saturday, October 9th, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. Featuring... Rascal Flatts. Also appearing, Kelly Pickler. Chris... It's like the old days of reel-to-reel -reel tape or, or vinyl. You change pitch, you change speed, they change together. That's just the way it worked. Now, thanks to digital technology, we can control them both independently. So we have control over pitch and we have control over speed. So we uncheck lock pitch or lock speed and pitch and now those two controls are totally independent. So let's just start playing around with speed or actually, well, let's just start with pitch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero out my speed so there's no change. I'm going to say resulting duration. Actually, let's just set it to 100%. So now the speed is at normal speed. And let's play with pitch a little bit. Now, you can't go with any of these controls. You can't go too far one way or the other without it starting to sound silly pretty quick. Unless you're doing, you know, a special effect. If you adjust pitch too much, it's going to start to sound obvious you've adjusted it. But if you adjust it in a small percentage, you know, keeping it within maybe 100 to 200 cents from, uh, you know, from zero. Zero is your normal pitch. 100 cents down would be sort of like a, a, uh, a whole step or half step on a piano. So that would be like going from a white key to a black key. And so if you make an adjustment that much, it won't be as obvious that you've made a change. Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. Saturday, October 9th, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. But if you listen closely, there are some little bits of artifacts in there. So it's not a perfect tool. So this is really something you would just use, again, sparingly as a special effect. That You do get a little bit of artifacting in this. Now let's see how far we can go before it sounds really strange. Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. Saturday, October 9th, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. 
featuring Rascal. So you're starting to hear some odd kind of artifacting that comes out of this tool. So it's not perfect, but it is something you can use, you know, from time to time for, you know, an animation or special effect, just like Ray was asking about. But probably something that's going to be more useful to more of you would maybe the speed control. So again, if you've already edited it down and you'd still need to get it just under 39 seconds or 30 seconds, for example, this is pretty cool. All you got to do is go to, to where it says resulting duration. And if you need it to be 29.95, for example, type in 29.95. Now the audio selection you've just adjusted is exactly 29.95 seconds. And let's see if it sounds acceptable. Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. Saturday, October 9th, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. Compared to the original. Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. Saturday, October 9th, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. So as you can see, it's not, it's not exactly the same as the original in terms of just purity. Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. You get a little bit of artifacting in there. It's not flawless. So it's uh, these tools are, I would call them a crutch. And because these are functions that are included in Twisted Wave, they're you know maybe not the best pitching and time control tools that are available in the market. These are just the tools that comes that it comes with. Now you can play around with what they call the DRAC engine or the DIRAC engine. And it, it adds another processing tool to the to your arsenal in, in regards to how the algorithms treat the audio when you control speed. And uh, if I play with the speed control, and you'll hear a whole new kind of artifact. Listen. Every day, win tickets to GoFest 2010. Saturday, October 9th, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. Featuring Rascal Flats. Also appearing. Kelly Pickler. See, you get some pretty bizarre artifacting with the DRAC engine. So you have to try it and listen to it because you won't know for sure what it sounds like until you try it. But I find that only small adjustments are going to be doable without making really major artifacts. Gates open at 3.30. Go Fest 2010 with Rascal Flats. So that's how you can adjust speed and pitch independently from each other. Uh, and experiment with it. Again, use your ear. See if you like the results of what you're doing. Don't just go by numbers. You have to trust your ear and see if you like the results. And uh, while some people may never realize they're hearing it, uh, an experienced audio engineer will immediately recognize that there's something wrong, and if they're really good, they may immediately realize that you're using some sort of a speed control on the audio. Thanks again for sending in that question, Ray. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your question answered on the show, your questions are what drive this show forward. So please do send them in at widomsworld at edgestudio.com. I'd love to answer it on a future episode. And if you want to have more one-on-one -on -one support on a specific issue, on your time, on your schedule, or a virtual engineering support session where I create an audio stack or teach you how to record or do some sort of process and send you a custom video that's also available among many other services over at vostudiotech.com thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys next week